Hi guys, came back again. Well, it's been an awful long time since I've last posted. Um, work has been very, very hectic with uh, breakdowns, interventions, turnarounds. And uh, as you know, in the contract game, when the work's there, you take it. Because you know how it's going to be there tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, these last two or three months have been, uh, been absolutely relentless. Um, and what spare time I have had of... Uh, I've put into uh, the family and also a little product that I, I manufacture on the side. Um, and I thought I'd show you these because I've got to ship a, a couple of these off tonight. But um, these are instruments I manufacture for the survey industry. And uh, I do these for a, a number of companies around the world. And these get used from the North Sea Atlantic Ocean all the way down to Bass Strait. And, uh, a lot of countries in between, wherever there's uh, oil and gas, is, is where these predominantly get used. Um, and there's three products that I have in the suite. Uh, the first one is uh, a little prism ball. That's a prism sphere but, uh, that I manufacture. Um, these were originally manufactured by a, a bloke in Scotland who had since retired and, and I was told that didn't want to carry on with the business anymore. So a company approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in uh, in developing it and taking it on. So uh, I said, well, we'll give it a go. And uh, that was five years ago. So it's, it's sort of grown a little bit since then. Um, if anybody knows of the chap that in Scotland who used to manufacture these, I, I wouldn't mind getting in touch with him and have a bit of a, a yak with him, uh, particularly about his, uh, his photonics, because... Uh, that's a, a science in its own. So that was six months research to get the photonics right for these products and to find a supplier that could meet the the, uh, the plummet ranges that I needed to work to, which was uh, on these particular um, prisms, uh, it's plus or minus um, two arc seconds, which uh, relates to uh, over over 500 metres, uh, maximum deviation of a tad over four millimetres. Probably a little bit more than that because you do get dust and and variations in the atmosphere that, uh, that, that can bend the laser uh, from the total station but uh, the idea is that uh, the surveyor can set these balls up um, a dozen of these at a time um, uh, shoot the total station out with its uh, with its laser beam and uh, and get a vector point or a vector angle from sphere to sphere they can also get a relative height from sphere to sphere, and they can also get a relative distance from sphere to sphere, so they can they can do a complete map out of termination points for uh, for pipelines. Um, and on the rigs, they use these for surveying to uh, ensure um, the structure um, hasn't had any great movement over a, a period of time. They can go out and survey and uh, refer back to see what to see what has moved and and has changed over time. So, um, yeah, these little spheres, um, as I said, I took them over from a, a chap who used to make them in, in Scotland. I wasn't able to open them up and have a look inside to see what he did. So I've done my own design in here, and they've got a fairly intricate um, setting arrangement that sets both the um, X and Y coordinates of that prism and also the Z coordinate of that prism. They need to be set extremely accurately um, relative to the centre of the ball, uh, to that face. Um, and I work on a tolerance with a tolerance is plus or minus 0.02 but I try and work on a tolerance of 0.05 if I can which is really pushing it for, for what I have in my workshop but um, that's what I aim for anyway so that's the prism ball and that's made out of a, a Martin City stainless and then I've got the L-shaped brackets uh, so they're manufactured uh, obviously to set a precision height from the underside of that these can get mounted on flanges or, uh, or structures around the site um, they are lapped I lap those give them a final lapping um, same with the buttons they uh, they have a lapped final surface to meet that center height within that tolerance range of 0.02 as I said I try and work on 0.05 if I can um, so if anyone knows of the chap that used to make these in Scotland um, just shoot me a message I, I wouldn't mind getting in contact with him and just having a, having a talk with him but um, yeah, I've had back to back to back orders of these, so I've, I've just knocked out 12 of the prism spheres and I've got another order for another six that um, I'm waiting for the uh, for the prisms now from my photonics company. And uh, so, lots of the buttons. I've got a fair bit on stock. Um, um, 
I don't keep the prisms on stock because they're so expensive. <laughs> so they're about a, um, a seven week delivery on those uh, from, from point of order. So this is, this is one of the spheres that I did purchase. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's badly shattered. Um, I got a little bit over ambitious on the final fitment on these and it didn't line up properly and I just gave it a little bit of a force to try and suit it and uh, I cracked it so that was the entire profit margin for that entire job gone with that, that one mistake so I kept it on my desk as a, as a little friendly reminder not to get over too, not, not, not to get over ambitious with it and uh, I'm developing another product too, uh, a line tool, um, this will be it's got a couple of notches mounted inside it there. It'll have the magnets set inside there. It'll have the arrows put in there and, and that ball will then be set very precisely. I'm just waiting on the precision glass bubbles that I will inlet into this uh, this plate uh, and set them up with my machine level. And then uh, this will get a, uh, prior to that, it'll get a, uh, a final grind and a final lap on that bottom face to, to set the, uh, the datum height um, to the sphere. So that's just a little product that, uh, that I've been working on over a number of years and uh, as I said I do these for a number of companies now so yeah just a little sideline just a little bit of play money for my workshop um, now that I sort of see a bit of a break on the horizon from work I can start getting into some of my my uh, workshop projects and one of the ones I do want to work on is that um, powered slotting head for the lathe so uh, on eBay, I've purchased the, the worm and the worm wheel. Um, steel on steel, not ideal. Um, this is going to be a, a low use unit. It's not going to be running eight hours a day, 24 hours, uh, eight hours a day, uh, 365 days of the year. Preferably would have been an, an alley bronze, but um, I, I did price them up and the pricing is horrific. So we'll go steel on steel and, and we'll use a high pressure um, high pressure oil on uh, as the lubricant on this. And, uh, We'll start putting that together. I've also purchased the, the little motor. That's a 0.18 kilowatt motor. It's a three phase. I'm going to mount a little, uh, I'll hook this up to a little inverter so that I can um, get the speed just spot on for the sliding action. Uh, and then I can size the pulleys uh, for a single phase motor for a fixed speed motor. This, um, I've just about finished the sectional arrangements on this now. I'm up to about 35 sheets altogether. So. I'm going to sell this design, um, you know, a reasonable cost, $30, $35. Um, it'd be great to see it out there and people making it. Um, but uh, I'll do that once I've actually completed the project. Um, I'll do an as built because uh, obviously one of's very, very hard to get right first time. You tend to backtrack a little bit and, and rework things, and some ideas you thought were great when you're looking at them on the screen aren't so great in reality. So. I'll do a, um, uh, an as-built set of drawings for it before I post them up and, uh, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm really looking forward to that build. It's going to be a really interesting, really interesting job uh, to see that come together. So uh, uh, something to look forward to. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it anyway. Um, in the shop, I did make a purchase. So I purchased a, uh, a right angle drive for the Bridgeport uh, head. And uh, I got that at a very reasonable price on eBay. I've been looking for one of these for over five years, ever since I, I had the Gem Power unit that I'd modified um, into a uh, into a slotter. It's, uh, it takes roughly 20 minutes, half an hour to, to change out each time. So it's nice to have a head dedicated for doing the the right angle milling, and then another head dedicated with the uh, with a slotting head on it. So uh, we'll take you out the workshop, and we'll show you what that all looks like. Now I'm just going to go handheld on this, but um, this is the new right angle head that I purchased off, off eBay and I got this for a really good price. I got it at a bite now and I made an offer and uh, we did a bit of bartering and, uh, and he accepted it. So I got this for around $500, which was fantastic. And it is actually a true Bridgeport right angle head. Um, beautiful quality and I compare that to the uh, Gem Power unit. Uh, which is a lot bulkier, a two-part arrangement. Uh, the nut screw on the back is retained with a, with a Phillips head screw uh, inside. Um, same thing, some pretty rough old watches that, watches that I've had to replace inside it, but this thing here is beautifully engineered. 
one thing I do love about it too, it's got this little um, peep hole. So um, as I bring the quill down to engage the uh, the drive dogs, you can actually you can actually see where anything is. So I'm actually going to do the same in this thing here. I'm going to put that little peep hole in there so I can see. Makes it so much easier to engage. And obviously with these right angle drives, I haven't got this locked onto the quill, but you can you can spin them around. Set up the dovetail arrangement off here with an arbor, and then you've got yourself a um, a uh, horizontal mill and uh, that's how I, how I cut a lot of the gears that I do uh, in that configuration and it works really really well but um, just looking at this it looks so much better engineered you know it's, it's quality piece much much thicker around this area here uh, where the split is compared to what the gem power unit is um, just a really nice unit and the idea of buying this is that um, it takes me about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour to, to actually get this assembled up with the slotting head that I described uh, in one of my other videos. So I can leave the slotting head permanently attached on this now and um, use it for slotting and uh, use this bloke here for uh, for um, milling at right angles. And it really adds another dimension to, to these Bridgeport machines. You know, they're not the most stable machines in the world, most rigid machines in the world, but if you, if you take reasonable cuts, and be careful uh, so universal and this just adds another dimension gives you another option for um, for doing those awkward setups and uh, I, I have used this quite a lot in the past so being able to keep that set up as the uh, as a slotting head and and keep that primarily for uh, for the right angle drive as it is or setting up with the uh, with the arbor with the dovetail sets it's going to make life an awful lot easier anyway i'll uh, i'll be back soon Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and uh, and we're going to make a start on that um, on that powered slotting head that will mount onto the uh, onto the lathe. As I said, I also want to design that slotting head up that we can actually mount it on a table, so we can we can mount it on a table. We can side shift it, uh, set up your your tail stock or your dividing head or whatever you want at the other end here, and uh, you can actually do slotting. Um, off the table, it'll be a compact little unit that'll just pop away quite comfortably into a cupboard where it, uh, when you're not using it. And uh, I think I'll put the maximum stroke on that. I think it's around about 80 or 90 millimeters, I think. So it's it's a fair range on that unit. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how it all works out. I'm looking forward to the build. So um, all right, we well, hope to see you soon.